Okay. So today we're going to pick up from where we left off. We're going to do more of domain and range. In fact, today's class also we'll be spending entirely on domain and range. Okay. But before I start, let's just do a quick recap. Let's just do a quick Q and A. Okay. So <clears throat> true or false? A one-to-one -one function is always an increasing or a decreasing function. True or false? A one-to-one -one function is always an increasing or a decreasing function. Okay. A many-to-one function is always a decreasing or an increasing function. True or false? False. What's the correct statement? It's both. Okay, it could be increasing and in during some interval, it could also be decreasing. Okay, for example, can you give me an example of a many to one function, which is both increasing and decreasing? Hmm, can anyone give me an example? Okay, a cubic curve, sine curve, or the curve of course, or quadratic, TK. Usually we're going to be dealing with quadratic and occasionally we're going to be dealing with trigonometric as well. Okay. okay. Is it true that a many to one function can also be turned into a one to one function? Is it possible that you take a many to one function and turn it into a one to one function? Okay. I agree. It is true. How is that? How is it that you can turn a one many to one function? All right. Domain restriction. Okay. That's true. So if I restrict the domain, and we're particularly talking about, not particularly, actually it could be any function, okay? So, but let's say if we narrow ourselves down to a quadratic function, if we restrict the domain from uh, to after the turning point, or we keep the domain from before the, uh, till before the turning point, it becomes a one-to-one -one function. Why? Because it is then constantly increasing, okay? So when we are finding out the range of a one-to-one -one function, what do we do? If we have to find out, if we've established that a function is a one-to-one -one function, and now we have to find out the range. How do we go about that? Yeah, you plug in the endpoints. Okay, so if, for example, the domain is from, like, for example, over here, three to seven, you can plug in the endpoints, given that you've established that it's a one-to-one -one function. Why? Because at one point, you will get the maximum value, and at the other point, you will get a minimum value, because it's constantly increasing, or it's constantly decreasing within a certain domain, okay? If, however, you figured out, you've realized that it's a many to one function, then what do we watch out for? If let's say we have to find out the range of a many to one function, then what is the one thing we watch out for? Vertex, okay, that's true. Yeah, turning point, basically. So we need to find out where the turning point is, okay? and especially if it's a quadratic function. Why? Because that could be the maximum or the minimum point, okay? So in a many to one function, we don't plug in the endpoints to find out the range. We first find out the turning point, and then yes, we plug in to the, the endpoints to find out the extreme value. So for example, if you found out the minimum value, now to find out the maximum value, we're gonna plug in the extreme points. Or if we found out the maximum value, now to find out the minimum value, we're gonna plug in the extreme points. Okay, so you gotta make sure that you remember all this. Now we're gonna do some practice questions, okay? Uh, in the last class, we couldn't do some practice questions from the book, that's what we're gonna do today, inshallah. Okay. So here we go, I've taken out some questions which we are going to solve together, okay? And then we can discuss some questions from the homework as well. What about open range? Okay, so if there is no restriction, that means, and if let's say the curve is a quadratic curve, then what's the critical value of a quadratic curve? The critical value is the y coordinate of the turning point. So if it's an open range, if there's no restriction, then it's either going to be greater than or equal to the y coordinate of the turning point if it's a minimum curve, or it's going to be lesser than or equal to the y coordinate of the turning point if it's a maximum curve, okay? We all know what the range of a sine curve is. We all know what the range of a quadratic uh, uh, cos curve is, okay? We know that. Uh, given that there is no restriction, okay? So why do we add equal to sine in open range for turning point? Because it is equal to that value. The curve reaches that value and have all the other values are greater than that value. So if you have a curve which is turning at two comma three, that means the y coordinate of the turning point is three. All the other values are greater than three. So that's why we put the equals to sine, okay? So you just gotta use your common sense. There are no, there are no, don't form 
very complicated rules for yourself. Just use your common sense. That is it equal to that value? Yes, it is. Then we're going to use the equal to sign. Like, for example, what's the range of sign? It's greater than or equal to minus 1, lesser than or equal to 1. Why? Because we know that it's actually equal to 1, and it's actually equal to minus 1. However, it can't be greater than 1, and it can't be less than minus 1. Okay, simple. We know what it looks like. We know how to sketch it. We know what it's equal to and when it's equal to. So that's how we go about it. Okay, so with functions, so far, whatever standard rules that we've set, or set for ourselves, just remember those. Don't form any new ones just yet. We'll form them as we go along. Okay, okay so I can see you've already given me the answer to the first part. I think that's correct. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, this is a quadratic curve, okay? And when you have to find out the range of a quadratic curve, the only thing that you're actually concerned with is the turning point, okay? So you have f of x equals to x minus two, the whole thing square plus five. And luckily for us, it's already in completed square form. That means I can immediately find out the coordinates of the turning point. And if you don't remember how to do that, well, then you have to go back and revise, okay? So quadratics is now for me assumed knowledge because we've done this so I'm assuming that you guys know this already. So the coordinates of the turning point are two comma five, okay? But let's sketch this, okay? Let's just for the sake of our understanding, just to be on the safe side, let's sketch this. I know a lot of you may be able to give the answer directly without having to sketch, but let's do that anyway, okay? So if I sketch this, I can see that the turning point is at two comma five. That means somewhere over here is two and perhaps somewhere over here is five. It's a sketch at the end of the day. So since we're only allowed to sketch it for x is greater than or equal to 2, that means this is the curve that I'm going to get. Okay, this is the curve that we're going to get. So if this is the curve that we're going to get, what is the range? Do, you all, do we all now agree with what Taha has said, that greater than or equal to 5, or you think it's going to be something else? f of x is going to be greater than or equal to 5. Why? Because 5 is the minimum value. And all the other values are greater than five. How do I know that it's going to be a curve that looks like this? Because of the coefficient of x squared, it's positive. That means it's going to be a minimum curve. Okay, so you got to put everything together when you're making a sketch. So greater than or equal to five is your answer. That's it. Okay, pretty simple. But still, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So if there was a minus sign outside, uh, then we would consider the curve. Yeah, in that case, it would have been a maximum curve. And in that case, the range would have been, in that case, the range would have been lesser than or equal to five, okay? Had it been a maximum curve, okay? So now you guys can probably see where they get their names from, minimum and maximum. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do come across some examples. Abhi, we're just getting there, part C and part D. We can only write y corresponding. So when we're writing down the range, what's the range? Range are your y values, okay? What's the range of x? That's your domain, okay? So when we're writing down range, we're only, we're only looking at the y values, okay? If the question asks you for the range of x, it's gonna use the word uh, domain, okay? All right, part B. In part B, again, what we're looking at is a quadratic curve. Now quickly, can you guys tell me the coordinates of the turning point? Can you guys tell me the coordinates of the turning point? Yes, no. Uh, one comma negative seven. Well, you're not gonna get the answer wrong, but it's not one comma seven. It's, yes, it's half comma seven. Remember, what do we do? We turn the expression inside the bracket equal to zero. So we get half comma, and not a uh, negative seven. Oh, uh, sorry, not positive seven. We're gonna get negative seven. Okay, guys, I think you need to all, you all need to revise um, quadratics. Very important, okay? We're not gonna go in circles. That If you're doing functions, we're gonna revise quadratics. We're not gonna do that. So make sure that you know the concepts of quadratics very well. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. All right, if this is what we're looking at, let's just quickly make a sketch. Half comma negative seven means somewhere over here, okay? Do we take the coefficient of x common? No, the, you don't have to do that. Just make x the subject. Just equate the expression inside the bracket to zero and make x the subject. Or solve for x, basically. Tika, that's what we do. Okay, now, 
Um, so this is what we're looking at since it's a maximum curve, minimum curve, sorry, this is what we're looking at. All right, now let me ask you guys, what do you think the range is going to be? Considering that we're only looking at the part of the curve that's after the turning point. What do you think? f of x greater than or equal to, all right, go on. Greater than or equal to what? Greater than or equal to minus seven. Tika, say yeah. Okay, now here's what happened. In both these parts, the domain made these functions what? One to one or many to one? In part A and part B, because of the domain, the function turned into what kind of a function? A one to one or a many to one? What do you say? A one to one, okay? Which is why we didn't really have to worry about what the maximum value was, okay? But in part C, we might have to be a little careful, okay? So here's what we're gonna do in part C. Pay close attention. Let me write it down. So f of x equals to eight minus x minus five, the whole thing square. And please do not jump to conclusions. And let me tell you something. If you're gonna try and do this, if you're gonna skip a lot of steps and try and, you know, be over smart about it to try and solve it in like, try and solve it directly. And you know, uh, if, you, if you're gonna skip all the relevant steps, you're guarant not guaranteed, okay, but you're just increasing your chances of getting something which you could have easily gotten right. You're increasing your chances of getting that thing wrong. Okay, so please don't do that. You're only inviting trouble, okay? You're not even gonna feel confident about your answer. Okay, so first thing I should do with this expression is, with this function is that I should write it nicely. Okay, and when I say write it nicely, I mean write it in a way so that I can see, so that we can see what the nature is and what the turning uh, point is, okay? So now we can see that the turning point is five comma eight and what's the nature? It's a maximum curve, okay? So we know that it's a maximum curve and we know that the turning point is five comma eight. Okay, so that means this somewhere over here, it's likely to turn. Okay, remember it's a sketch at the end of the day. Do not waste a lot of time trying to be so pinpoint accurate. You're not gonna get any extra marks for that, okay? Now, looking at the domain, the domain makes it what? The domain makes it a one-to-one -one function or a many-to-one -one function? What do you think? Considering that the domain is from four to 10. 4, 2, 10. That means if I sketch it, I'm gonna get some value at four, and obviously I'm gonna get some value at 10. I don't know what that value is going to be. Let's find out, let's find out in fact. Let's find out f of four and let's find out f of 10 because these are the endpoints which we're interested in. So let's find out their values, okay? So let's plug in four. Be careful, don't make a sign error considering that you have a whole square here. So f of four is seven, and let's find out f of 10. f of 10 is negative 17. Okay, so we have all we need. f of four is seven, and f of 10 is negative 17, okay? So this is what we're looking at. Now, considering that we're only allowed to look at the part of the curve that I've drawn, what do you think is going to be the range. Think about it, you have everything in front of you to give me the correct answer. What do you think is going to be the range of this function? Eight to negative 17, that is correct, good job. So as you can see, eight is the maximum value. And as you can see, negative 17 is the least value. So that means the correct answer is greater than or equal to negative 17, lesser than or equal to eight, that's it. Okay. Now let me tell you why a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people don't get this wrong because they don't know what the concept is, okay, everybody, at some point is able to understand that yes, you have to be careful when you're finding out the range of a many to one function. But still the reason why they get it wrong is because they're very lazy about going the extra mile. 
Okay, this what we're doing is we're going the extra mile and not even a mile, I would say just an extra 10 meters, okay? So this is what a lot of people are lazy about. And this is the reason why a lot of people get questions like these wrong, okay? So please don't have that lazy man's approach where, you know, you're just, you're just gambling with your marks, okay? Might as well just plug in four for one value and 10 for the other value. So please don't do that, don't have that approach, okay? Don't be afraid to go the extra mile. You're gonna, not only are you gonna get the answer right, you're also gonna feel a lot more confident about your answer, okay? And the reason why you're gonna feel that is because your answer is right, okay? Okay, now let's do part D. In part D, we come across something new. And this is one plus square root of X minus four. Now, how many of you have sketched square root functions in the past? Just type yes if you've done it. Yes? When? I was hoping you guys will say no. In physics? Okay, other than physics. One plus square root of x minus four. Okay, not even, other than further math. <laughs> other than physics and further math. Have you guys done it? No, great, okay. So you're fine. You don't need to know what the sketch is going to be, okay? All you have to do is use some common sense. So let's first write this nicely. Let's write the constant at the end, okay? Which is what the standard rule is. x minus four plus one for x is greater than or equal to four. Okay, now I will solve this. I will explain this to you guys, but right now I want you guys to use just your common sense, no concept of math. I want you guys to use your common sense and tell me what do you think will be the appropriate range for this function and do not use any graphing tool. It's okay. <laughs> it was weird at first, but now I've gotten used to it. Greater than one, all right. Greater than one, just greater than one. You're on the right track, but you might wanna pay a little more attention to your answer. Greater than or equal to one. Okay, perfect. How? That is the correct answer. Greater than or equal to one is the correct answer. Now, why do you say that? We plugged in four. TK, what happened then? Because of domain, TK. So my point is you guys figured it out, right? You guys figured it out, how? By simply identifying a trend in the function. So if you plug in four, what happens is that this expression, this part of the function becomes zero and then you have a plus one, okay? And then if you plug in five, you have a value which is greater than one. And then if you plug in six, you have another value which is greater than the value that you got when you plugged in five. If you plug in seven, you get a value which is now going to be greater than the value that you got when you plugged in six. And the same pattern will repeat. Why? Because, because of the domain, this will constantly increase and in the end, we will be adding a one to it. So that means looking at the pattern, we can find out the range. All we gotta do is do some trial and error. F of four gives us one f of five gives us two, and f of six will give us something that's greater than two, okay, two point something, f of seven is gonna give us again something even greater, and then eventually what happens is all the values are gonna keep on increasing. So that means looking at the pattern, looking at the trend, we can identify what the range is, which is gonna be greater than or equal to one. Okay. So does that mean that we always have to sketch? No, the only time where we have to sketch is when we can't identify a pattern. Okay, and when can we not identify a pattern? In a many to one function, why? Because a many to one function, you will notice for a certain domain, it's gonna increase, and for a certain domain, it's gonna start decreasing. Take care. So there you go, these are uh, four examples that I've solved. Take a good look at all four of them. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so I'm guessing no questions. All right, I'm judging by the silence, no questions. I don't wanna get to the end of the class and uh, have one of you ask me to explain what we did earlier. Graph for this will be the same as others, like what if we have to draw it? Okay, uh, if you have to sketch it, no big deal. All you gotta do is plug in a couple of values, okay? 
and uh, identify the trend and just join them. Okay, you will get a curve similar to a quadratic curve, but um, yeah, the way to sketch it is to plug in some values and that's it. Take care. Okay, so moving on, let's do some more questions. All right, here's another question. And by the way, these questions are from your book, okay? We're not solving fast repair questions just yet. We will, of course, inshallah, but not just yet. Express each function in the form a x plus b, the whole thing square, where a, b, and c are constants, and hence state the range of each function. Very easy question. I'm just going to solve one example. Okay, I'll do the difficult one. I'll skip the easy one. But let me ask you guys, when you're... What kind of a function are we dealing with? We're dealing with a quadratic function. So what is the one key value that you should be focused on if you want to determine the range of a quadratic function, given that there is no limit to the domain? Perfect, turning point. Can you narrow it down further? What coordinate of the turning point? The y coordinate of the turning point. Tika, so eyes on the prize, always. And the prize is the y coordinate of the turning point, okay? So I'm gonna use this. And what method do you guys prefer? Um, do you prefer the one that we do in math, or do you prefer the com comparing of coefficients? Completing square, no, completing square is something that we'll have to do anyway, but the one that we do in math where we add something and subtract something, is that the method you guys prefer? Okay, Tika, so I'll, do, I'll use that method. But please don't completely let go of the other method, okay? So 3x squared minus 10x, we leave a bit of space, we add two, Achha. Here there's a problem. The problem is that the coefficient of x squared is not one, it's three. So how do we fix that? We know how to fix it. We take three common, x squared minus 10 upon three x. Instead of writing 3.33, write 10 upon three, okay? And then leave a bit of space, write two, okay? Achha, uh, we've, we're gonna take, sorry, we're gonna take two common. Uh, we're gonna divide two by three as well, okay? So write two upon three, all right. Now, what are we going to add to complete the square? We always add half of the coefficient of x. Now, if you can't find out half of the coefficient of x, all you gotta do is use your calculator, okay? Don't do any unnecessary, unnecessary mental math. So take 10 upon three and divide it by two again. So you get 10 upon six, which is five upon three. So what does that mean? That means you're gonna add five upon three, the whole thing squared, and you're gonna subtract five upon three, the whole thing square. So you get 10 upon six, which if you simplify becomes five upon three. Then what happens is that this part of the expression becomes x minus five upon three, the whole thing square, okay? And this we simplify and we write it as two upon three minus bracket open, please use your calculator. Like I said, don't do any unnecessarily unnecessary mental math five upon three, the whole thing square. So this becomes minus 19 over nine. And not to forget that there is a three outside, okay? So what does this become? This becomes three into x minus five upon three, the whole thing square. 19 upon nine into three, it gives us minus 19 over three. So what are the coordinates of the turning point? The coordinates of the turning point are five over three, comma, minus 19 over three. So now can you guys tell me the answer to this? F of x is going to be greater than, lesser than, greater than, equal to, lesser than, equal to. What do you think the answer is going to be? Question for you guys. Greater than or equal to, my question was, okay, what do you think the answer is going to be? It's gonna be greater than or equal to negative 19 over three, okay? Faiz, what, what exactly did you uh, ask me to repeat? My question or what I've just done? The question, the question was, what is the range going to be? Okay, so here's the range right in front of you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna, so this is not part A, sorry, I've written part A accidentally, it's part B. I'm gonna skip part A, it's exactly the same concept. Okay, there's not a lot of learning through part A. I'm gonna move on to some more complex questions. Take care. 
Hmm, I can give this to you guys as homework, so let's forget that. Okay. This is an interesting question. Represent on a graph the function, so and so, and find the range of the function. All right, so this may be a first for all of us, okay? Why? Because we have to make two different graphs. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna come across questions like these, by the way, in M1. Those of you who are taking M1, you will have to uh, sketch or draw graphs like these uh, in M1, okay? So can you please tell the range of a x plus three, the whole thing square minus 20, it's gonna be greater than or equal to minus 20 if the domain has no restriction. Can one function be quadratic and linear at the same time? Okay, so this is not one function, okay? These are actually two functions, two different functions that make up one function. So you know what we call this? We call it a piecewise function. The reason why we call it a piecewise function is because it's literally stitched together in pieces. That's why we call it a piecewise function. So what we do is, for different values of x, we plug them into different functions, depending on the domain that's given to us, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. So first, let's start with the first one, which is three minus x squared. So quick question, what kind of a function is this? Linear, quadratic, a quadratic, take care. What do you think will be the turning point of this function? Quickly see if you guys can find out the turning point. This expression doesn't require a lot of hard work. Yeah, because it's technically already in completed square form. All you gotta do is just write it nicely. So if you write it like this, you can see that the turning point is zero comma negative two. So here's what we're doing. We're plugging in values from zero to two, okay? So might as well make a table, x, y. So if I make a table and plug in values, this is what I get. At zero, we can see that what we get is negative two. Then we have to plug in one and two, that's it. So at zero, we get negative two, at one, we get three minus one, which is, sorry, uh, not zero minus two. Sorry, it's not zero minus two, it's gonna be zero minus three. Okay, I don't know why I also did not notice that. It's gonna be, yeah, yeah, it's zero and uh, minus three, you're right. Zero, zero and positive three, sorry, my bad. It's <laughs> zero and positive three, take care, my bad. All right, don't just stay confused, feel free to point it out, take care. If you plug in one, you get two. And if you plug in two, three minus four, that's minus one. See, okay? Achha. So here's one, here's two, here's three. Now in questions like these, let me tell you, in questions like these, you will be given the grid, okay? So if you have a question like this in past papers, you will be given a grid, so you don't have to worry about it. So at zero, it's three. At one, it's two. And at two, it's minus one. So that means this is what we have. Tika, this is what we end up with. Now let's sketch the other function. Okay, that means from two to four. So that means if I'm now plugging in three and four, in which function am I going to plug in three and four? I'm gonna plug it in this function. Tika, this is what it means. This is what a piecewise function is. You have two different domains for two different functions. From zero to two, you will plug in the values in this function, and from two to four, you will plug in the values in this function. Now you might think there is one value which is common in both. And in that case, that value will give you the same answer irrespective of the function that you plug it in. Let me show you. So for example, if you if we plug in two over here, like we did, we got minus one. And if I plug in two over here, which I'm allowed to, three into two is six, six minus seven is also minus one, okay? So nothing to worry about. Don't think that you will get two different values. That's not possible, okay? So I'm gonna make a separate table for three x minus seven. Here's x, here's y for two, three, and four. At two, we get minus one. 
Let's plug in three. Three into three is nine. Nine minus seven is two. Let's plug in four. Three into four is 12. 12 minus seven is five. Okay, so let's make a table. Let's make it look nicer, although not entirely necessary. There you go, there you go. So at two, it's minus one. At three, it's two again. And at four, it is five. So somewhere over here is four and somewhere over here is five. There you go. This is what we get, okay. Now, if I ask you to tell me whether it's a one-to-one -one function or a many-to-one -one function, what are you gonna say? All of it, okay? Not just one part of the function, the entire function. Is it a one-to-one -one or, or is it a many-to-one? It's a many-to-one, okay? It's a many-to-one function. Okay, now if I ask you guys to tell me the range, Tero, let me label it completely and then see if you guys can tell me the range. What do you think is the range of this function going to be? Greater than or equal to minus one, is that it? And lesser than or equal to five, that's correct. So part B, f of x greater than or equal to minus one because that's the least value as we can see and lesser than or equal to five, why? Because that is the greatest value that we can see. Okay, so this is your range for this particular function. Now as always, take a good look at it. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so what do we call these functions? We call them piecewise functions. P-I-E-C-E, -E, piecewise function. Okay. But you won't find them, uh, you won't find them, uh, no, 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 obviously not the P E A C E, okay, P I E C E. Uh, how did you find the turning point? Completing square? It's already in completed square form. What's the x coordinate? Okay, so this is a very common confusion. Terror. It'll make more sense now. Can I write it like this? Yes or no? Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, so as I was saying, you won't find it, uh, you, won't, you won't find questions like these or you won't find this concept with that name in the syllabus, but this is what you call them. Okay, um, I wanna skip a couple of questions and move on to some challenging ones. Yeah, okay, let's do this question. Now, these are the kind of questions which you can expect in past papers, okay? The one that I'm about to solve right now. That doesn't mean that all the other questions are irrelevant. Obviously, they helped us learn one concept or the other, but the question that I'm solving right now, they are entirely relevant, okay? So here we have a quadratic function, okay? And we are given the domain. We are, we are and we're also not. Okay, we are kind of given and we're kind of not given. We're given that it's greater than or equal to a certain value and lesser than or equal to a certain value, okay? Now, both the values are same. The only difference is that one is positive and the other is negative. So that means it could be five and minus five, it could be six and minus six, it could be two and minus two, it could be one and minus one, we don't know. Okay, so that's what we have to do, we have to find out, okay? Now remember, serve two different ranges? Um, nay, nay, nay. Was, please clear this. One is the domain, the other is the... Achha, okay, oh, you're talking about this. You mean two different domains. Okay, so I'll tell you what this means. This means that X belongs to the set of real values and then it's further narrowing it down. That means from the real values, from the real numbers, it's basically narrowed down to this. Why? Because you can have some unreal numbers inside of this range. Okay, inside of this range, you can have some imaginary numbers. That's why the question narrowed it down, okay? That um, not only is it, it belongs to the set of real values, it's further narrowed it down by saying greater than or equal to minus A, lesser than or equal to A, okay? 
Okay, so what we have to do is we have to find out the value of A. All right, so the second you come across a question of functions, which is dealing with a quadratic function, you, your um, instinct reaction should be to find out the turning point. Okay, to find out the turning point. Why? Because the turning point is a very critical value when finding out the range. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find out the turning point. So f of x equals to x squared minus two x. We're gonna leave a bit of space, write minus three. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna write plus one squared and we're gonna write minus one squared. So this becomes x minus one, the whole thing squared. <laughs> and this becomes minus four, okay? So we now have the turning point, which is one comma negative four, okay? Okay, now, so that means this function that we are looking at turns at one and negative four, okay? Any questions so far? If yes, please feel free to ask. Somewhere here is one, somewhere over here is negative four. Again, it's a sketch at the end of the day. Don't waste a lot of time trying to be pinpoint accurate. Okay, so if you look at the range, the range is from minus four to five, okay? That means that whatever the domain is, it includes x as one, okay? That means the domain includes x equals to one. Why? Because the turning point the y coordinate of the turning point falls within the range. All right, so if the y coordinate of the turning point falls within the range, that means the x coordinate of the turning point falls within the domain. I hope everyone's understanding what I'm saying. I'll repeat, if the y coordinate of the turning point falls inside the range, that means the x coordinate of the turning point will also fall inside the range. Okay, okay. Now what we're gonna do is, we know that this function at some value is equal to minus four, and we know that this function at some value is equal to five. Now we already know at what value of x is the function equal to minus four? What is that? We can already see that. Can you guys tell me what the answer is? At what value of x is the function equal to minus four? See if you guys can answer that. One, that's correct. Why? Because that's where it's turning. Why did we add one and minus one? Uh, completing square. Okay, that's how you bring uh, an expression into completed square form. That's why I added one and minus one. Okay, go back and revise completing square. Okay, I'll repeat the range thing. So if the y coordinate of the turning point, which is minus four is inside the range, that means the x coordinate of the turning point will also be inside the domain. That's what I said. So since you know that at x equals to one, y is minus four, and you can see that minus four is included in the range, that means x equals to one is also included in the range. Chika? Okay. Now let's see at what value of x is the function equal to five. Why? Because that's what the domain is, right? Uh, that's what the range is. So we gotta find out at what value of x is the function equal to five. So for that, all we gotta do is x minus one, the whole thing square minus four, equate this to five and solve for x. x minus one, the whole thing square equals to nine. Take the square root on both sides, which means x minus one equals to three or x minus one equals to minus three, okay? So that means x equals to four or x equals to negative two, okay? X equals to four or x equals to negative two. All right, now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do some trial and error, all right? I want you guys to keep your eyes and ears open. We're gonna do some trial and error. Why? Because one potential answer could be that if x is equals to four, okay? If x is equal to four, or in other words, if a is equals to four, okay? Let's say a is equal to four. So, that means, that means that our domain could be minus four to four. Okay, this could be our domain. If A is equals to four, that means our domain could be from minus four to four. Now, to further understand this, let's make a rough sketch of what we, of the kind of function that we're dealing with. So at what value of X is it equal to five? It's equal to five at four and minus two. That means if somewhere over here is five, it's equal to five at four. And it's also equal to five at minus two. Here's four and here is minus two. So this is what we are looking at. 
Okay, this is what we're looking at. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. If, let's say, hypothetically speaking, this is supposed to be the correct answer. Okay, if let's say, this is supposed to be the correct answer. So we already know that when x equals to four, the function is equal to what? The function is equal to five. But what happens when x is equals to minus four? Achha, why are we trying minus four to begin with? That's because of the domain. So if a is four, that means minus a is going to be minus four. So let's see what the value of the function is when x is equals to minus four. That means we're gonna plug in minus four over here. Let's do that. So minus four minus one is going to be minus five, square of which is 25 and 25 minus four is, what's 25 minus four? That's 21. So if this is the domain that we choose from four to minus four, this is what we end up with. So you think this could be the correct value of A? Think about it. Do you think this, is, this could be the correct value of A? Why not? Why not? Why is it that this can't be the correct value? You guys are right, it can't be. Yes, because the range is till 21. That means we're looking for, we're looking for a particular value of x, which gives us the corresponding y value, which is inside of this range or at max equals to five. So what other option do we have? The other option that we have is if a is equals to two, in which case our domain is going to be minus two to two. Okay, now let's see what f of minus two is equal to. So minus two minus one is negative three, square of which is nine, nine minus four is five, and f of two, let's try that. Two minus one is one, one squared is also one, one minus four is minus three. So what do you think about this? You think this could be the correct answer? And if we take from minus two to two, let me show you what we're looking at. If we take from minus two to two, that means this is the part of the function that we're looking at. So for this part of the function, from minus two to two, our range is from five to negative four. So what do you think? Is this, could this be the correct value of A? Think about it. This is the correct value of A. So that means what is the value of A? The final answer is gonna be A equals to two. So remember what I said earlier. The reason why students get questions like these wrong is not because they don't know how the concept works, it's just because they're lazy about it. So don't be lazy, don't be afraid to do a bit of trial and error. And if you do that, you will get the right answer. And not only that, you will also understand why this is the correct answer. Okay, so I'll repeat why I equated f of x with five. In fact, I'll give you guys a whole summary of this. Uh, why is a two wasn't x minus two? So the thing is, if let's say minus a is equal to two, then a becomes uh, a becomes negative two. Okay, so the thing is, if one value of x is positive, the other value is gonna be the same. The only difference is it's gonna be negative. So if you've got an x equals to as, what we're actually finding out are values of a, okay? So what we've done is we've replaced x with a. Think, it, think about it that way. We've replaced x with a, and what we're doing is we're actually finding out values of a. So if a is negative two, that means minus a is positive two. Okay, and when we write it in range form, we write it from minus two to two only. Okay? Acha, so to answer your question, why did I equate f of x with five? The reason why I did that is because we wanted to see at what value of x is the function equal to five. So at one value, of x where it's equal to five is minus two and the other value of x where it's equal to five is four. Okay, now what we now have to do is we need to find out that what is the appropriate domain for which the range doesn't change. Is it from minus two to two or is it from minus four to four? So the problem with minus four to four is that if you go till minus four, the maximum value that you get goes outside of the specified range. Why? Because at minus four, you're getting 21. Okay, technically this was a, not a necessary step because we already saw that um, x equals to four pair we got five and x equals to minus four pair what we get, that's what's important. So at minus four we get 21, which is going to be outside the range. 
But what if we stay within minus two and two? So at minus two, we see that it's equal to five. And at positive two, we see that it's equal to minus three. And not only that, when you go till positive two, the minimum value is already included. That means the minimum value minus four has now already been included. Tika, so that's how this works. So I hope that answers your question, Moment. Okay. All right, let's move on. Yes, it is a bit challenging. I can understand. So, tell. Will we give A as 2 or minus 2? So, A is positive 2. A is positive 2. See, the thing is, when you this is the correct range, right? So since this is the correct range, that means this is what it's supposed to look like. So either you write A equals to 2, or you write minus A equals to minus 2, which then, again, leads to the conclusion that A is equals to 2. OK. okay. Now, um, where were we? Yeah, so I'm going to give you guys a question to solve. So this is the last question of domain and range. OK. I've skipped some questions. That's because I'm going to give them to you guys as homework. Um, in fact, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we solve this question, let's do one more question. One interesting question that I'm looking at. Question 15. So the first part I want you guys to solve. I'll give you two minutes. I want you guys to solve just the first part. All right, that was quick. Can I have the answer if you're done? Uh, sir, it's two bracket x minus two whole square minus two. Two bracket x minus two, two whole square minus three. Minus three. Take uh, Let me just double check and make sure that this is the correct answer. Tika, say, good job. Okay, I hope everyone else is also getting the same answer. Achha. Then we have something interesting. It says express f of x, sorry, oh, that part is already done. State the value of k for which the graph y is equals to f of x has a line of symmetry. Now, let me tell you something. Again, if you try and solve this question directly, which I'm sure a lot of you will be tempted to, there's no way you can get this question right. Okay, I mean, Maybe one in like 10 attempts, you'll be able to get it right, but not at all recommended, okay? So like I said, as soon as you have a quadratic function in front of you, you know, that's what the question is dealing with. Just bring it in completed square form so that you have the turning point and make a sketch. Now, the completed square form, the question has already made you do that. So, you know, uh, we got lucky there. But the sketch, the question hasn't asked us to sketch it, but we will do it anyway, because like I said, it's only going to help us understand what the question is asking for and what the correct answer is. It's gonna help us get to the correct answer. So the coordinates of the turning point are two comma negative three. Two comma negative three. So here is two and somewhere over here is negative three, okay? So that means if I make a sketch, this is what I can expect. Okay, without taking into consideration what the domain is, okay? But here's the domain. The domain is from zero to k. And we want to write down the value of k for which the graph has a line of symmetry. Now, I will solve it, but at the same time, I want you guys to try and think what the correct answer could be. 
okay? So zero, two, that means from here, at zero, it's five, as you can see, that's what the y-intercept is. From zero to what value of k will this curve have a line of symmetry? Think about it. What should be the value of k? By the way, let me ask you guys, what is the line of symmetry going to look like? Is it going to be a horizontal line? Is it going to be a vertical line? What do you think? In a quadratic curve, a line of symmetry is a vertical line. Take it, it's a vertical line. Now, where, what value of x should that vertical line pass through? No, two is not the correct answer. Two is not the correct answer. So you're saying, you're saying, okay, uh, listen, 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 listen. Okay, I think I know what you, why you guys are saying two. I'm not asking you to find out what the equation of the line of symmetry is. That's not what I'm asking. That's not what the question is asking. The question is asking what should be the value of k for which this graph has a line of symmetry. Take okay, care, understand what the question is saying. What should be the value of k where this curve has a line of symmetry. Where y is five, that is true. That is true, where y is five, that's correct. So the other value of x for y is five. Now can you think about what that value of x is going to be? Can you think about what value of x that's going to be? Now remember this curve, a quadratic curve, is symmetrical by nature, okay? That's correct, four. Now where exactly did four come from? So here, pay close attention. So basically, we know that if this curve is going to have a line of symmetry, the line of symmetry is going to be x equals to two. There's no doubt about that because at two it turns and x equals to two is a vertical line which will cut the curve into two halves such that one half will be the mirror image of the other. Okay, that's what the line of symmetry is going to be. Now we need to see that what should be the value of k which is basically the end point of the domain for which this function is going to have a line of symmetry. So we need to see where exactly is the domain starting from. The domain is starting from zero. That means we have from the line of symmetry, two units on the left-hand side. So from the line of symmetry, we have two units on the left-hand side. That means if you want to keep it symmetrical, how many units should we have on the right-hand side as well from the line of symmetry? We should have another two units. If you want to make sure that this remains symmetrical, you will make sure that you have two units on the right-hand side of the line of symmetry. Now, having two units on the right-hand side of line of symmetry means what is the value of k going to be? The value of k is going to be two plus two, which means it's going to be four. So what's the correct answer to part B? It is four. So again, now again, I want you guys to take a good look at it. Let me know if you don't understand so I can explain it again. Okay, for your value, yeah, I can repeat that, don't worry about it. So, first of all, I want you guys to understand that no matter what quadratic curve you draw, or as long as it's quadratic, let's say you have x minus, wait a minute, x minus one, the whole thing square, plus two, okay? No matter what kind of a quadratic curve you draw, the curve will always have a line of symmetry, okay? And that line of symmetry is going to be x equals to h, where h is the x coordinate of the turning point. So where is this curve turning? It's turning at x equals to one and y equals to two. So the line of symmetry is going to be at x equals to one. Okay. Now here's the thing. If let's say, here. Yeah. So if let's say, If let's say we take this part of the curve, okay? And let's say I give you guys a range and the range is like, for example, like what it was in this question from zero to K such that the curve remains symmetrical, okay? 
So where exactly do we find the mirror image of the part of the curve that I've highlighted? The mirror image is right here, okay? Now the question is, when do we stop? Like how do we know that we stop here and not go beyond this part of the curve? So here's how we do that. This is the vertical line of symmetry. And notice that this part of the curve is just one unit towards the left of the line of symmetry. That means if you want to remain it, if you want to keep it symmetrical, you will also have one unit on the right hand side of the line of symmetry as well. Okay, just like that, if let's say we extend it a little, if let's say this is the curve, okay, and we want to make sure that the domain is such that it remains symmetrical. So what are you gonna do? This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna see how many units do you have on the left hand side of the line of symmetry. So how many units is this? This is one and one, so that's two units. So in order to keep things symmetrical, you will have two units on the right hand side as well. Why? Because having two units on the right hand side gives you this part of the curve and notice it is now symmetrical. TK, do you get it now? All right, sounds good. Part C, for your value of K from part B, find the range. Okay, this I'll let you guys solve. Tell me the range of this curve, considering when K is equals to four. It's The answer technically is right in front of you guys. You don't even have to put in any effort. Mm-hmm. Yes, Abdullah and Upaytullah, your answers are correct. So what's the minimum value we're looking at? Minus three. What's the maximum value we're looking at? Five. Now we don't have to worry about what X is going to be, what Y is going to be when X is zero and what Y is going to be when K is four. Why? Because we already know the answer to that. We know that at zero as well as four, in both the cases, it's going to be five. Okay. So it's going to be greater than or equal to negative three and it's going to be lesser than or equal to five. Yes, part B is doable for uh, by equating f of x to five. Take in fact, let me do it that way, Just considering that we already have it in um, completed square form. So if I equate it to five, now why are we doing that? Because at zero, it's five. Now we're looking for the other value of x, which is k, where the function is equal to five, okay? How do we know the graph is stopping at five y coordinate when x is four? Because we just found out what y is going to be when x is four. Didn't we? Didn't we just find out that what y is going to be when x is four? When x is four, y is going to be five. And when x is zero, y is going to be five. Now, do we have to worry about the value of y exceeding five within the given domain? No, because the curve is symmetrical from zero to four. So whatever it is at zero, it's gonna be the same at four. And whatever it is at one, it's gonna be the same at three. Get it? Okay, now, Ubedullah, I'm doing this for you. Pay close attention. So 2x minus 2, the whole thing squared equals to 5 plus 3, which is going to be 8, which means x minus 2, the whole thing squared is going to be equal to 4. Then if you take the square root on both sides, that means x minus 2 is equals to 2, or x minus 2 equals to minus 2, which means x equals to 4, as we saw, or x equals to 0, as we also saw earlier. Okay, so your approach is spot on. Okay, so, so far, I have been solving all the questions for you guys. And now it's your turn to solve some questions for me. And in the last 10 minutes, we are going to, together, solve this question, question number 16. Okay. So I'm gonna give you guys some questions to solve now. So I did part B, I want you guys to do part A, and I want you guys to do question number nine, both parts. Okay, solve this. Then I'm gonna give you guys one more question. Tika, let's just do these three questions. So I'm gonna give you five minutes. Tika, once you guys are done, then uh, we will do one last question and that'll be the end. Okay, so we have the answer for the first part. I just noticed f of x is greater than or equal to minus 20 is correct. Good job. Nine part a f of x is, so your value is correct. You might wanna reconsider 
greater than or lesser than you might want to reconsider that obviously with the equal to sign for 8a minus 2 janat our answer is going to be in range form so minus 2 obviously is insufficient so you got to tell me whether it's greater than lesser than greater than or equal to 23 again reconsider reconsider what kind of a curve are you dealing with yes that's correct okay quadratic all right now narrow it down further is it a minimum or a maximum curve yes it's a maximum curve so what you found is the y coordinate of the turning point that means all the other values all the other values are going to be lesser than or equal to so that means f of x is lesser than or equal to uh 23 so why 20 for 8a why 20 for 8a so find out the turning point x square plus 6x leave a bit of space add 3 square minus 3 square so this becomes x plus 3 the whole thing square minus 20 so the y coordinate of the turning point is 20 in fact not just um 20 negative 20 and all the other values are going to be greater than negative 20 why because it's a minimum curve okay f of x lesser than or equal to 5 for 9b that is correct f of x lesser than or equal to 5 for 9b is the correct answer good job okay so that's that now we are going to move on to the one question which we haven't solved from this exercise and that would be it so make sure that you guys read and understand this question carefully okay yeah the timer goes in negative now i don't know why this has happened all of a sudden i don't remember changing a setting or changing the setting or something and i don't i can't even see the option to not have i mean to cancel that here uh it's not exactly that important so here it says find the largest possible domain for each function and state the corresponding range now remember what domain is domain are the values of x that can be plugged into a function okay and range is what you get as a result by plugging in those values of x okay so in part a in the first part is can you think of a specific value of x that we can't plug in the function can we plug in negative values? Can we plug in zero? Can we not plug in zero? What happens if we plug in zero? Do we get an error? No, we don't. Janat, same question to you. What's wrong with one upon three? What happens if I plug in one upon three? Do I get an error? Is it not solvable? That's what your that's what your question. That is what you should be looking for. All right, what happens if I plug in a value less than one upon three? Which is, which zero is one, by the way. Zero is one value, which is less than one upon three. What's wrong in doing that? That's what my question is. What is wrong in plugging in a value that's less than one upon three? No graph? What do you mean no graph? So let's plug in zero. Let's plug in zero. So three into zero is zero. Zero minus one is minus one. Nothing wrong. Let's plug in minus one. Three into minus one is minus three. Minus three minus one is minus four. Nothing wrong. Let's plug in minus 20. 3 into minus 20 is minus 60. Minus 60 minus 1 is minus 61. So can you think of one value which if we plug in, the whole thing just explodes? Like, it's just not possible. We get an error or something. Can you think of one value which does that? Other than that. <laughs> Other than that. Any real value. No, right? So what does that tell you about the domain? Somebody's already answered it. In fact, a lot of you have already answered the question correctly. But yeah, let me, real numbers, that's it. So the answer is going to be x belongs to the set of all real values, OK? Now, what about the range? Can you think of one value that its or, or range is not going to exceed or the one value, it's never going to be lesser than. Can you think of something like that? No, because it's a straight line. It's a straight line, right? 
it's a straight line. It has no turning point. So because, yeah, exactly. Because it's a straight line, it has no turning point. That means it's going to go all the way to positive infinity. It's going to go all the way to negative infinity. So no restriction as such. That means the range also belongs to the set of all real values. Take care. All right, moving on. Part B. A quadratic function. So what can you tell me about the domain? All right, listen to my question carefully. Domain. Is there a value of x which I can't plug into this function? Real numbers, that's true. Because as far as the domain is concerned, you can plug in everything, anything you want. But as far as the range is concerned, what do you have to say about that? Turning point, all right, elaborate. Is it going to be always greater than some value? Is it going to be always less than some value? If you want, we can quickly make a rough sketch. We can quickly make a rough sketch. Zero comma two are going to be your coordinates of the turning point. So this is what it look. This is what it's going to look like, and we can see that the least value it's ever going to take is two, and all the other y values are going to be greater than two. Hence, greater than or equal to two. Okay, part C, two power x. Now remember, quickly recall what two power x looks like. So let's start with the domain. Any value of x you think I shouldn't plug into this function? Nope, no value of x. I can plug in all values I want. So all real values. What about the range? Greater than 0, that's correct. Why? Because if you think about it, it can never be equal to 0. It can get closer and closer to 0. Okay, it's going to be, it can be 0 0.00001, but it can never actually be equal to 0. Okay, so therefore, greater than 0. All right, part D. Now things are getting difficult. Not difficult, technical. Just be careful. Not equal to zero, okay? So not greater than zero, not equal to zero. The only thing we can't plug in is zero, okay? So our answer is going to be x is not equal to zero. That's it, okay, for the domain, because we can't write down all the values that can be plugged in, okay? So, because that's a, that's a bigger set. So instead of doing that, let's just write down the one value of x that can't be plugged in, which means zero, okay? Or if you want, you can go a step further and say, x belongs to the set of all real values, and then write that x is not equal to zero. Okay, that's perfectly all right. Okay, what about the range. Now here you might have to put some thought. What do you think about the range? Can the range be negative? Yes. Can the range be positive? Yes. Can the range be zero? Can the end result be zero? No, it can never be zero. Why is that? Because you're always dividing one by something, okay? And you can divide one by whatever you want, no matter how large or how small the number is, it can never be equal to zero, okay? You can bring this entire expression equal to a very large positive value. You can bring this entire expression equal to a very small positive negative value, but you can never bring it equal to zero. So that's why a range is going to be not equal to zero, take care. Okay, see if you guys can solve part E and part F without my help. Very easy now. Not equal to zero domain, that's correct. Oh no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not equal to zero is not the correct answer. Not equal to two. Because two is that value. Two is that value which if x is equal to, we get an error. The range will also be the same as the previous part, that it can never be equal to zero. Okay, it can be equal to anything other than zero, but never zero. Why? Because you can't plug in x, you can't divide one by something and bring it equal to zero. You can bring it equal to a positive value, negative value, all that is possible, but not equal to zero. 
Sir, x can't be less than 3 and f. Yeah, that's true. So if it can't be less than 3, what should it be equal to? What should it be equal to? Greater, not greater than 0. Greater than or equal to 3. All right, so what's wrong with 3? I can plug in 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So I'm still getting an answer, right? 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Okay. But I can't plug in anything that's less than 3. Okay, so that means the range naturally then becomes greater than or equal to 3. Uh, the domain naturally becomes greater than or equal to 3. What about the range? That's correct. Greater than or equal to minus 2. Because minus 2 is the least value that you're going to get, and all the other values of x that are greater than or equal to 3, you're going to get a value that's greater than minus 2. So that's why your range becomes greater than or equal to minus 2. Tika, all good now? I didn't understand the domain part. Uh, for which question? Part f? OK, let's go. So when is a square root function not defined? Like what, have, what should be inside a square root for us to be able to get an answer? Is square root of 0 possible? Yes, we can calculate it. Is square root of any positive value possible? Yes. Okay, it is possible, right? We do get some answer. Whatever the answer, what the answer may be depends. What the answer is going to be depends on what you have inside the square root. But what happens when you have a negative value inside the square root? You get an error, okay? It becomes a complex value, okay? So that means in this function, we have to make sure that whatever is inside the square root, okay? Whatever is inside the square root, all right? x minus 3 is inside the square root. So whatever is inside the square root remains greater than or equal to 0. Whatever is inside the square root remains greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So how do you make sure that OK, why not equal to 0? Let me ask, let me counter question you. You're saying y equal to 0. So why not equal to 0? What's wrong with 0? What happens when we try? Yeah, exactly. Because if we try and find out square root of 0, we get an answer. So that means it's possible. A square root function can be, inside the square root, you can have 0. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is having a negative value inside the square root. Okay. So x is greater than or equal to 3 becomes your domain. And then you can plug in some values from this domain in the function and see what the range is. And you will realize that it's greater than or equal to minus 2. OK, all good now? OK, great. All right, so as far as domain and range is concerned, this is all there is. OK, we're going to keep it till here only. In the next class, inshallah, which is going to be on Thursday, we are going to do composite functions, OK? I will stop here. See you guys, inshallah, on Thursday. Take care, everyone. Love is.